So this is the western stone. This is the other stone, uh, which is just the other side of the road in the quarry at Baalbek. It's 1,240 or so tons. It's got chunks carved out of it. And you can see as much, it seems to be deeper than the other one. Why they didn't take this one, why they didn't use it, I don't know, but you can see all around. The whole place has been quarried with caves everywhere. So this is the second largest one. It's bigger than the stone of the pregnant woman or the stone of the south, but not as big, not as bulky as the one that was discovered in 2014, the 1650 ton stone. So this is pretty amazing. It's just like a rubbish dump though. They're just throwing tires and everything else around here, but it's a real privilege to be here. So you can just see one side of the stone here, how deep it is. I mean, the width of the top is not as deep as the depth of it. I mean, look at that. That must be like 18 feet, maybe more. Think about, you know, why they did this, why they did it at an angle. Is that so they could somehow then transport it? But I mean, look at how low it is in the ground. I mean, how would you get that even just to the road level and then you've got to go all the way uphill nearly a kilometer all the way to the Baalbek site if indeed it was for that or perhaps like with the other stones that we've seen around the world it may have been left here for a purpose for a reason to mark a sacred spot to mark the birthplace of the temple to leave the largest stones in the quarry which is a possibility that this was a tradition that was passed on all the way around the world from the time of Gobekli Tepe about 11,500 to 12,000 years ago through Karahan Tepe, through here, through Giza with Aswan Quarry, all the way to Rapa Nui or Easter Island and so forth. So this is, you know, could be part of that tradition. Or, as the traditional archaeologists say, that they, it was a low quality stone and they realised after they cut it all out and they didn't fancy moving it. But, you know, why would they go to all that effort? They must have known the quality of the stone during the cutting and the shaping and the quarrying. So you can just see all around here, all these caves, all at the top there. All above the stone, you can see caves and carvings. But this is just magnificent. 1,240 tons, pure rock in the Baalbek quarry. So we're just standing on the 1,240 ton stone here with the Western Quarry at Baalbek and you can just see this huge chunks being carved out of it. There's always, there's all these holes in the rock and whether these were done later is unknown. And here's, you know, like a gully or a crack in the rock that was carved out. This was obviously going to be turned into like four separate stones, but it never happened. Basically, it's got left here to rot, but you can see up here, there's even a circular depression on the rock, which someone's taken the effort to do, and the one above it, all these little caves and carvings. So you can see how much they must have, rock they must have removed. The traditions of giants are evident here. We have various patriarchs of the Bible, and we talk about Cain, and he was here with a bunch of giants who then got wiped out by the flood. And these are pre-Diluvian remains here, part of what we're looking at now. We also have the stories of Kronos, who was the leader of the Titans. And he was the son of Gaia and Uranus, the earth and the universe. And he was a giant, he created giants, and his colleagues, or his auxiliaries, as they called him, were the Elohim, spelt slightly different to the Elohim, but probably the same group of angelic, or, you know, that type of shining one, a type of shining being, who was half human, half god, much like the Egyptian gods. And they bred with human females and gave birth to the Nephilim, who were said to be the inhabitants of Baalbek and the creators of Baalbek. And so if that's the case, this makes sense because we know the Nephilim, we know the Watchers, we know the 
Gregory and all the different Elohim and the giants of the biblical traditions were fascinated and loved building with stone. They loved quarrying and building huge temples and walls. And they were always employed by the standard sized humans to do their handiwork. And this is probably evidence of that. I don't entirely believe this is just a Roman construction. I think there's more to it than that. There's a different level of antiquity we're dealing with here. And it's just incredible to be here, to be in an area, even though it's half a rubbish dump and half a quarry, this is still an absolutely beautiful, fascinating place and very much looking forward to experiencing the entire temple, the Baalbek Temple, also called Heliopolis, which was given that name during the time of uh, the Ptolemaic reign, the Greco-Roman reign in Egypt. And there were strong connections with Egypt. And I believe the same people were employed or involved in the construction, maybe given different names. But I believe the giants were part of that. So we're here at a completely different quarry. This is not on the tourist trail. This is actually private land. And we've got permission from our archaeologist friend, Mohammed. You can see the caves over there. And over here is where we've got much more evidence of ancient quarrying. So I'm going to take a GPS at this site. So we're just in this secret quarry. This is a place that no one I know has been to before. So we're privileged to be here. We thank Mohammed for this and Pierre for sorting this out. So we're going to go and have a look, see what we can find. We can actually go inside the earth here into caves that were quarried by the ancient megalith builders here at Belbeck. Not much, you can't really see anything yet. But let's see, as we go around the corner, people have built houses on top. So this is still, oh my God, look at this. So we're now going inside. Wow. Now this is something which I did not expect to see on this tour. Wow, this, you can see the way, the way they've been cutting the rock. Unfortunately, it's kind of used as a rubbish dump. Kind of reminds me of Nuapa Inglesa in Peru, near Oriente Tambo. Look, you can see the quarry marks at the top there. It's quite remarkable. The bird? The bird? Oh, nice, yeah. So you can just see down the side here where there's striations in the rock. This reminds me almost like Oriente Tambo and Stonehenge even. And then we have this, these pieces up here. Look at these. These are absolutely incredible. All the way around the top here. Showing evidence of quarrying, cutting. And we must question, was this actually a temple, like a cave temple? of the ancient builders. But look at the striations on here. This is incredible. You can actually see it all over these rocks. So these striations on this rock are remarkably similar to what we see as one quarry. So what, what's going on? We are comparing between this style of quarries and what we have in Egypt. And uh, the, the ones we have in Egypt if the ceiling is not, if the stone is not solid like that, then they will keep pillars from the bedrock itself to prevent the ceiling from falling in the workers. And at the same time, they will create a big space that works later as a temple or as a place for the workers to live. So with these striations, do they remind you, are they a similar style to what we find at Aswan Quarry? Not here? Aswan, a Silsila Quarry. Where is that? The quarry for the sandstone, the one we were passing by when we were in the Nile cruise. So we have a similar style of Very quarrying. Similar. And you can see the size of the blocks is divided like that. So they didn't extract the megalithic blocks from yeah, here. Small. They extracted smaller blocks. But the quality of the stone seems to be more solid than the one in the, on the other side. Yes, yes.
So we're here at another part of the site, this unknown quarry, and you can see this is very strange. It almost looks like some kind of niche temple, like a meditation space, but apparently it's just a quarry used by the Romans, according to our archaeologist friend. And you can just see the striations all on the rock there. And the area which you can actually squeeze in. Very intriguing on the roof as well. All these kind of striations, strange things. It's just a huge great thing really. Sort of like bulbous coming out, expanding in size at the top. It's almost shaped like uh, something in Turkey. We've seen similar things in Turkey and in other parts of the world like false doorways that lead to nowhere. We've got another niche down here. Absolutely fascinating. It's all been carved out there. You can even see the steps going up there, like steps to nowhere. These actually look like Chincana steps that you get in ancient Peru. I mean, look at those. All the way there to all the way up the top. And they don't even go to anywhere. Absolutely strange and incredible. So we just found this other part here, let's take a look. Whoa. This is Yeah, we have not uh, uh, finished, not do any any study for this one, because uh, in this place we have uh, private property, uh, the private for uh, for uh, for the, the government. It's very small, uh, because this. Uh, you know, it's interesting. It's it's, uh, they are not not doing any study in this area, but absolutely, the, it's the extension of. Uh, okay. Roman quarry. Absolutely. 